Hey folks, this is Noble Rambler, and welcome to Ostrov on steroids. <laughs> now, this is Manor Lords, though I guess if I were going to compare it to a game, at least one that I played, it'd be probably closer to Farthest Frontiers, in that, you know, a colony builder where raiders will come and attack you, and they will attack us. We're going to pop into a new game, and... Not a lot of choices, just get the nine as far as a face to uh, to represent yourself. I'm going to go with this guy. If I didn't have a grandpa with such a head of hair, this is probably closer to what I would look like. But <laughs> it'll work. And this game does allow you to upload your own coat of arms. And I have put this one together. Look at that. So we don't have to go through this and try to create one from scratch. But there's a lot of variety here to to build one continue i'm going to work through this normally i would just skip this and start the game but i want to go through it step by step and kind of figure it all out to tell you what i know about things at this point things that are going to change in the next week or two or whenever update one hits right now the ai is a bit aggressive and there's what are there nine provinces on the map and he wants to eat through them quite quickly, which doesn't give you a lot of time to create a town. It's at least not the way that I like to create it. So I'm going to slow things down a little bit here. But he, with the new update that's supposedly on its way, that's going to be balanced out a little bit better. Along with the few other issues that, uh, that they're dealing with. But end goal, we could play a peaceful game. And goal is just growth, getting to a large town settlement, which takes off all of the combat. So I know many of you really prefer just to do a, a town builder and, and don't want to deal with, with war or combat. So there is an option here. We've got a restoring the peace, which you are up against a baron who's trying to take all the lands. Or on the edge, grow your city and raise forces as quickly as you can. The lands are pestered with raiders and undefended settlements will perish quickly. So this is a a more aggressive attack you all the time sort of a thing. I've played this one myself, enjoyed it, but I want to slow things down here a little bit so that we can spend a little more time building a town rather than you know the stress of getting yourself ready for battle so quickly and, and not really being able to enjoy the town building part of it. So domination, eliminate all the other lords by claiming their territory. We'll go with that. AI appointments, or... Um, opponents the uh, work in progress so i'm not really sure what that means other than maybe more than just the the one baron that's against us here but maybe multiples um is it stronghold that will let you have multiple enemies all come at you from different places i've been so many of those older games i played long ago kind of mixing them all up in my head now off map adversary that is what i'm calling the baron and he'll meet him shortly so present or absence. So we get two choices. We'll go with present. AI aggressiveness. AI lords may press a claim toward the player's regions after they run out of neutral regions to claim, which is what I want to change because he will claim all of the other regions very quickly and then he's after you. And I'd like to spend some time exploring building two or three towns and 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 trying to figure out how on earth you manage so much you know, so many different um, facets of it simultaneously. So if we take this down to reactive, the AI Lord, or the Baron, will press claims, will not press claims toward the player's regions, but will protect their own. So when we're ready to press the attack, then the end battles begin. I think that's the, the route to go. Otherwise, aggressive is... Um, oh, that was it? No, nope, balanced may press may press toward the player's region at will uh, oh may not even wait until the the uh, the free regions the the neutral regions are claimed i see he may just come right at you aha okay we're reactive for this series raider frequency the raiders are different from the bandits bandit camps will pop up all around the map raiders will specifically target you Bandits are annoying, they will steal from you. Raiders will come and try to burn your town down. So no more than a single raid every two years versus none at all, or versus crazy. Less than one year between each raid. You spend all your time fighting it, it wouldn't do any town building. We'll go with medium. 
Raider free years. Let's give us some time. What are our choices? One, two, three, one, two, three. Let's go with three free years before the raids begin. That will give us time to hopefully even get in, into our second town, maybe. And there's there's a lot to that because each town could each region could have its own priority. One could be farming, one could be mining and armoring. You know, a lot of different uh, focuses. So I want to be able to explore all that before we're either wiped out or we end the game. So how many bandit camps do you want to already have festering the the map? We'll go with the one. That way we can go and attack it whenever we want. Though if we went to zero. What I've noticed, oh, well, we do go all the way up to five. What I've noticed is right here, what is your limit of three? As soon as you hit three bandit camps, then the Baron sends his troops in and begins to take them out. So this would give us a little more time before the first, before the, the countdown of three begins. Okay. If you can keep taking them off the map before it hits the limit of three then the baron will not start sending his troops in take all the camps out there's an advantage to taking the camps out yourself you get their gold you get the uh, um influence i believe is called of you know basically the prestige of having taken them out and if you're not ready before it hits three and the enemy the ai opponent goes after them instead then you lose all that advantage so let's go with none. That'll buy us one more season, one more round of spawning bandits before we hit our, our end. Season starting. Spring, that's the best. That gives us three quarters of a year before we're under snow. Um, starting supply standard. We've got choices of double or nothing. Let's go with standard. So when you see what we start off with, you could start with twice that many. And, but this is this is doable, so I'll go with that. Armament delivery. As seems like it timed out with the first bandit camp showing up, if I remember right. But there is a point fairly soon into the uh, into the series when a delivery weapons will show up, and you can use that to equip your your first uh, um, militia. So it's a huge advantage to have it. Without it, you've got to quickly get to tier two homes that can create shields and and um, bows or spears, and it takes a while to get to that point. So by then, you're just going to be uh, pestered by all these bandits, maybe even the raiders. Um, so yes, on the delivery, residential requirements. Town will not grow if requirements are unfilled. So with balanced, you've got to have a 50% approval rating. And then you get, you'll receive one new family per month. At 75%, you'll receive two new families per month. I don't know what happens if you go below. I guess this means you will requirement triggered loss of approval are shifted by one level to be less demanding. So maybe that's 25%, then 50, then 75. Hmm. We'll go with this one. I'm used to it. Medium penalty for approval versus residential requirements. What is approval then? Impact on your growth. Hmm. I think these two are related. I'm not sure exactly how they're nuanced compared to each other. Underground water requirement means you can only place a well where there are where there's an aquifer underneath. And that makes sense. Rather than just anywhere you want to. Weather events balanced. So you will get lightning, you will get droughts. And Hey, that lightning is uh, pretty intense. Let's go for that. Is there anything else if I scroll? No, we're there. Okay, so beyond that, it's just... Oh, difficult, none, or balanced. So difficult must mean... I see, okay. So you're going to get a lot. What's the choices here? Unconstrained or underground water? Okay. So I think that is a decent start. It's not too easy. It's not too hard. It's going to let us build for a while. So let's go with that. Begin. And we're dropping in. Now, when I first started this game, let's pause there. Yeah, it would stagger and stutter really bad sweeping in like this. And what I found is it had something to do with, let's see, graphics. 
The DLSS? No, it wasn't that. It was the dynamic. It was off. I switched it to on. It came off by default. I switched it to on and I was able to move around a whole lot better. May just be, you know, something to do with my, my particular graphics card. So, not sure. Anyway, here is our starter town. We have got five families to begin with. We are in Goldhof. And the enemy is north of us. He owns these two of... What is this? No, it's not nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight regions. Eight, eight provinces. Okay. You can rename the provinces. Let's see. It's not going to let me click. Are we going to deal with this? Maybe so. So victory conditions dominance. Build your, your town, your manor, and when you're ready, press claims toward regions owned by your opponent. Once a claim has been pressed, be ready for battle. I'll unite these lands under my rule. So, click on... Oh, I see. you got to click on one that's not yours. Then you can claim with influence. Takes a thousand. We have none at the moment. Or claim with the king's favor, which is something that's not in the game yet. But that's something that will be coming. This is our province. And, let's see. C is construction, which allows you to see the overlays. Underground water. There's a lot of water here. So we can drop wells along roads or wherever we want all over the map. So that's great. Fertility-wise, we're not so good. Emmer is a form of wheat. It's a, oh, more of a heirloom wheat. You know, wheat from old Europe. Unlike what we typically see here in America now. So a lot more protein, a lot less gluten. Far better quality wheat than what you typically see in the grocery stores nowadays. So old version of wheat. A real version of wheat, we'll put it that way. Flax, very little fertility, whereas this place is pretty good. So if this is the idea of, of the game in multiple provinces, in that you want to expand into other areas. If you can get a hold of one of these two, you can get a good farming community going. Whereas over here, we've got a rich deposit of iron so we can definitely do a lot of mining here and start building up our armories and and blacksmiths and what have you and we can concentrate on animals so we've got leathers that'll be coming out of here at a higher rate than over here whereas over here we've got clay there's not a lot of use for clay you've got clay tiles at this point so the game is is is, is new it's there's a lot more to come so there are enough um supply chains to make it really interesting but i'm sure there's going to be a lot more at some point maybe buildings that are made of brick so other uses for the clay there's stone i got berries stones down over here 120 in ours versus this sort of sort of some comparisons 180 over there there's going to be a rich one here somewhere right there so that's 860 and with the right research you can go into like a deep mine you can make it endless so each region will have its own advantages over the others we have dropped in over here next to what's called a king's road so the the main roads on the map originally you cannot delete them so you've got to make do with them and we can change the names, Goldhof. And when I first started playing this, I would look at that, and the first thing that would come to my mind was, where is it? Was was Gandalf from Lord of the Rings? So, yeah, why not? Gandalf. Yeah, well, we'll rename that. So, what? Uh, enter and there. This is our development uh, chart here, which we grow the town we'll get points and we can put them into a variety of of, uh, of technology we'll get into that much later but we are here right now we've got good animals we've got berries over here so food is going to be into the forest and branch off one way or the other we've got clay over here which will well 236 is a pretty good amount so it's going to take a while to mine through that and we've got full-on iron mining over here and this, I'm pretty sure, changes every time you start the game. It's 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 random where everything lands, where the resources land, and who gets what. So, don't like what you've got, just roll the dice again and see what happens. If I orient myself so that the enemy is north, 
and so the the words are the right direction too then that's looking at the game from this direction settlement over there mining's to the south should I do that I don't know this feels a little more natural though because of the placement so I'm probably gonna build right into here now where do we start I want to start different than I see most people start most series that I've watched immediately drops five houses down because huh, I'm guessing because they played Ostrov and you've got to get housing for your uh, for your villagers but um, and, and villagers in this sense are got to think of as families not persons you're not assigning a person to a job you're signing their entire family to that job which is the way it would have been long ago where the you know the, the son follows in his father's footsteps and continues the family profession kind of a thing um, so we need timber we've got enough logs what do we have is there a way to easily see this? Uh, starting supplies, can we click on them? We can. So we start off with 20 bread, 20 firewood, 20 stone, and 10 tools. And over here, there we go, we've got 8 logs. And we've got 50 coins to start with. So if you had chosen double the starting um, allotment, then you'd get double these. So we've got enough logs for a little while and we're going to need more of those coming in the ox hauls the logs to wherever your building site is and the ox hauls logs out of the forest for the logging camp so one of the first things i want to do is get another ox you know increase our efficiency big time if we can be hauling from multiple directions simultaneously so let's get into logistics and grab a new hitching post this guy can be, here's the, the first one for this, this ox. We'll put forestry or logging out in here somewhere. So let's go, well, I can tell you what, we can move these later. Let's just drop them in right here and get that placed. And let's get a logging camp going. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do here yet. So logging, the deeper you go, the more trees will have to be sacrificed you don't get these logs back they just vanish so tend to not want to just you know clear out forest in that in that way let the loggers clear it out and get use of the logs into here i think we're going to take out these guys here and build the town into this and then into that and when we get into farming we're not going to get much farming out of this province but we could get something out of here Okay, let's keep that one in mind. Uh, we have something down in this corner, but that's too far away. That's kind of far away. And that's too close to the animals. If we build next to the animals, which, by the way, are right in there. Yeah, love this game. So realistic in here. The sounds and the music is just amazing. But let me pull back out, pause again. If you build too close to them, they will leave. I've been told that. I've seen the warnings of it. I've never tried it just to see what that means. Do they leave the map or they just move over to another forest? In which case, if, you know, if that's the case, then if you really wanted to build your town right here, then kick them out and let them pop over here. But I don't know if you would lose your rich deposit status if you mess with it. So that's not something I'm going to do. So let's clear out this forest here uh, right there and we'll do it from over here we'll kind of make this our our base area now controls in this game are different from pretty much any game i've ever played it took me a while to figure this out it is right there but i didn't even see that for the longest time i'm looking out here where my mouse is thinking how do you do this so yeah it's right there a lot of times in games they'll put it down at the bottom of the screen and it'll pop in when you click on the building so it's it's obvious but this all kind of pops in together anyway you click and hold and then roll side to side and you can place it that way so let's get into here and looks like it's pretty wide open on this whole back side and the the four little dots around the square are your road connections and see how it just you you get where you almost have it right where you want and then it snaps let's get rid of that I want to place it where I want to place it. So we're going to go in here. We're going to go kind of diagonal. And how deep can I get without taking out trees? Right there. You're going there. And with that, I can go ahead and turn this on. They will 
slowly start heading in, grabbing supplies and doing what they need to do. This guy is going to be first, and I could designate it as such with my priority system, but they're going to go ahead and do it on their own, so that's fine. In fact, look at that. Barbara, the ox, is already hauling the first, uh, the first log in. Look at that. Uh, wrap that rope around it, tie it off, swing it in there, take a few peasants out, and they're up and going. One log has been delivered. They're going to dig out everything and then get it all set up. Then they're going to head over and start working on the logging camp. Where'd you go? Right there. All right. This is March. I guarantee you by April it will be raining. Because, you know, what's, how's that poem go? April shower. April showers bring, well, ruined bread is what it brings. So we need a place to store that or it will give us the little message that, hey, dummy, you left the bread out. It's ruined now. And we're going to have less food. So construction, where would that be? Was that logistics also? It is. So a granary. Now granaries for foods whereas the supply warehouse is for other materials. Foods we meet, foods will be berries, they will be breads and vegetables and things like that. So this is the area where this goes. So let's swing you around, put you on the main road. I kind of think so. I'm thinking that we're going to have a lot of traffic through here when the traders start coming through to our trading post. It might look good to see all these carts rolling right through town. Now what I would like to do, I'm going to do a lot of talk in this first episode, probably not a lot of actual building, but I saw somebody and I really liked the look of it. He had put two roads through the main drag and put small buildings in between and made kind of a double roaded boulevard between these fully upgraded houses on both sides and it really looked good so i'm gonna play with that kind of idea but to do it for a long stretch kind of just looks like you didn't even try to get creative and make curves anywhere so i don't want to do it for very long but i'm thinking from this if i could just pop that in right now roads so roads click and then pull out where you click again, it will start to bend. Where you click again, it will bend even more. As you hold the control down and roll your mouse wheel, you can take the those bends and make them more extreme one way or another without even moving. So you have a little bit of flexibility in how you want your curves to go. Right click pulls you back out of it. But if we were to Y off of there, so let's pull off and grab a little more natural, about like that. Pulling over like so and then coming around. I'm going to stop there because I don't know exactly how wide that needs to be. And if you put it all in as one long road and decide you need to delete part of it, it deletes the entire run. So if you put roads in in smaller sections, you'll only be deleting smaller sections afterward. But the granary would look good in there. So where are you? Right here. I just need to have the spacing right so that it fits. So let's pull you out. That is road or R. Hold your alt down and then click remove. And you know how long it took me to figure that out? Again, forgetting or not realizing this was down here. Yeah, that was that was a frustrating evening. <laughs> okay, so the granary is going to go into this area in between. So that was in production of logistics and granary. So pulling out, food is centered right over in here. So whatever the back end is, I think from there to the, maybe right here is another split. So just this area right here for our downtown core. In the middle of that is going to be, now one edge of that is going to be the granary. And if we're going to be facing this way, then let's turn it like so, so we can see the opening. I think that's going to look better. A well should be in this area too. Let's grab that real quick. So residential has your well, has your marketplace, your church, your tavern, your corpse pit. I don't know why that's in residential, but it is. Corpse pit is where you bury the enemies. They don't get to be buried in the church yard on hallowed ground. The wells need to land where there is water. So that's going to come off of here. I don't know if we're going to get room there. We might. 
there and over here the the more you can get in the better because there are lightning fires so i can get to there swing it this way oh i can get even closer okay so the tighter you can make this or that i can make this the better it's going to look as far as this double roaded boulevard let's go right there so we'll split off go around that come across let's put one more in and your well only has to touch it. it doesn't have to be centered so you do have the flexibility of getting all the way out as far as there then it goes red so we can get it in nice and tight over here yeah put a well in there and centered i think so I'll go right there i wish it could be over here and then wrap the 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 fork in the road around it but there's no water here all right so there's that is there anything else that wants to go in the middle i can turn that on let it run we want to get the storehouse in soon that's logistics right there but he's too big when you when you upgrade him i had set him up on my my uh, practice game and got him in there we, we don't have enough logs uh, we got to get the uh, got to get the logging camp going okay but he looked great when he was in this stage when i upgraded him it becomes quite a significant building and then it just this big old sore thumb in the middle of this of this tight little corridor it didn't look good so he needs to go probably a, a road that branches through and takes off and be you know off on a branch somewhere so tell you what with that let's build this road we will do it in two pieces let's come out like this branching off wrapping around well okay we can click there and we need to get out as far as here so let's go halfway and call that done start up again that way if i need to break this in half and get it just a little bit wider for a building i want to put in i'm not going to lose the whole road Let's go over to here, grab it, and then let's see. Let's go a little bit further, curve a bit, and then curve back. Yeah, let's see. Now, in Austria, if I could hold a button down and stop the snapping, but I don't think there is one here. Adjust curve, road connection point, cancel, and place road. Yes, yeah, so we don't have... I want to get... Right about here, and then curve in. Okay, and let's adjust that a little bit and see what we do. That rounds it out a little better. Okay, we'll do that. You're in. There's our boulevard. You can picture tall houses over here, three-story houses, three-story houses here, and common stuff, uh, markets and, and wells and things like that through the middle. That's, that's what I'm picturing. Though right now, this is what we're starting with. And here's one of the best parts of this game. You get to walk through your, your village. Now, try to see his face. It's almost impossible. You can swing around. Oh, nope, 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 nope. He just will not let you look at his face. He's, he's very shy. <laughs> and it doesn't match the character that you've picked unfortunately so maybe that's something that will happen later but over here building the well one thing that i really enjoy about this well it does operate like an ostrif and when it comes out the bucket that comes out actually has water in it and you can see a reflection in the water and it's it is amazing so there's the bucket here's the weight at the end They'll grab it, push it down into the water, pull it back up, and tip it into their own bucket. And it actually functions. Now they are off to work on something else. That means they've got the logging camp done. We need to get somebody in that logging camp so we can get, uh, get logs being made. Okay, so let's... Logging camp, let's put two families in for now. Out of our five. And let's... Let's see here. We need what well, we can do... One thing we can do is we can set where we want them to log. And control and roll your mouse wheel lets you choose the size. We don't want to get into the berries. Which, does it show us? It doesn't show us from this view. Okay, well, we'll look at that from a different perspective soon. But pull up in here. I think we can... Yeah, I think that's a pretty good sphere of, 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 of attack. Right there. I would like to clear-cut leaving 
some trees behind to kind of hide the clear cut but in this case we're going to be moving into that clear cut so that's fine but grab anything else to build right here and get into here i think yeah there's your, your berry bushes kind of showing up right in there and your area of influence for your wildlife so we can't build within any of that or um overlaps animal habitat will cause migration and over here does it give me a warning trees uprooted for no it doesn't give me a warning as far as ruining the the berries okay but i'm pretty sure you build over the top then you lose that food and we have a new message i've heard of your renown I only seek to defend my rights and my honor against those who would wrong me. I hope you will not judge me by the rumors and slander that some have spread about me. Signed and sealed by his own seal, Hilder, Hildebolt von Berenroot, or something very close to that. We can write back, but this part of the game has not really been fleshed out yet. Here's the Baron that wants to take over the entire region. You have no rightful claim to these two provinces that he now has. I can grab that and paste it into a response. There'll be probably several different options to choose from with a point system as to how much you're going to either infuriate him or maybe other ones to try to generate peace. So kind of a negotiation aspect of this. But right now, I don't believe it has any real effect on the game at the moment. But he is the one who has these two and is going to quickly try to spread throughout this whole thing. So, bandit camps, we do not have any yet. So it'll give us a notice when one arrives. Otherwise, you would normally start off with one somewhere here on the map. And, and before long, you'd get messages of how they are stealing from your, your coffers, stealing from your granary. And at this point, or maybe forever, I don't know if it's going to change with updates, but you cannot guard yourself from those bandit attacks. So you just have to assume that somebody has snuck through the woods when nobody was looking, gotten into a building, grabbed a bunch of stuff and left, and eventually somebody noticed, hey, five bread are missing. And so you just get the message that bandits have stolen something. So it's just assuming that somebody got dressed up to look like us, that is a heavy load. He's just hauling all that stone in. Stone is... Ah, oh, the granary, I believe, takes 10 stone. Yeah. Now, we started off with with 20. And the church is going to need stone as well. Residential. The church is going to need 10. So you have enough to make one granary and one church to begin with. After that, you've got to start mining your own. Right over here. All right, so we've got you in. You are making logs we put in the new hitching post and we have room for one more ox here so let's go ahead and get that one come it's going to cost us 20 out of our 50 so that 50 doesn't last very long be careful about spending it too quickly until you get your trading post up you are going to be uh, short on funds uh, well, there are options available to get more funds you could set yourself up an army which we aren't ready to do that but you could then go and attack one of those bandit camps and that should send a couple hundred of gold your way from their loot as well as anything they've stolen from you can get a lot of that back or you could get the manors the houses up from level one to level two at level two you start receiving one coin per month per house level three you get two coins per month per house eventually you put up the manor administration and be able to tax them. You'll tax money from the town's funds into your funds. Each province will have its own town's funds, will be treated separately, its own manner, its own points to choose its own research. So that's the difference between this and the last series that I did in Ostrov. You're basically creating one, two, three, whatever many towns you can pull off simultaneously, all under the flag of your noble or your, your, your own baron, you might say, your own leader. And it's from these funds that you fund regional things like war, like hiring mercenaries and, and you know, that sort of thing. Whereas these funds are used to build your own town with and, and upgrade your town's 
uh, amenities versus this town's amenities. They will have their own budget. Or over here, they've got 30. Why is that? This should change as I move around. No, it's just telling me my own because I only have one. As you gain another province, this all this will shift to this province's numbers versus this one. It took me a while to get used to that. So it's it's really a you gotta wrap your mind around a whole different concept of, of gameplay with this with this game. It's a lot more complicated. But if you take it nice and slow, you won't see me running at three speed. Uh uh. Nice and slow, you got plenty of time to figure it all out and do it the best you can. We're still building our, our granary. We're still in March. We're fine. Um, I do want to get the storehouse in because for some reason, and I don't get it, stone will go bad if it sits out in the in the rain. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that one needs a little adjusting. I do want a side row that punches through. Do I want it to go all the way through? I don't know. Or just from one leg... Maybe at a common point. Yeah, let's grab one right here. Let's just take him off here for now and just kind of see what that looks like. So from there, housing wise, how many can I fit in here? Um, construction finished the well, okay. Uh, this one's still building, okay. I don't want to be running too long talking while they're not building anything, but we're still working over here. And for that matter, let's put a third family in. Let's get as much logging done as possible. We don't have a lot of construction to do at the moment. I'm running nice and slow and spending a lot of time talking. So I'm amazed I can even do that. I'm just finishing up with a with a chest cold and it wiped out my voice for a week. So we'll see how long I survive this. But let's that's right, manners. That's what I was talking about. So, not manners. I'm calling them manners in my head. They are... Where am I? Over here in residential. They are burgage plots. We talked about burgage plots in the Ostrov series. Tried to build some of those. And it didn't work that well. Because in Ostrov... Let's go here as an example. Like that. In Ostrov, the house would sit this way. And you couldn't walk through the house to get to the back. You had to walk around it. Though in this case, it is like giving me room to walk around. If I were to make that a little bit narrower. Is that my... If I went there, would it even let me? Too small. Okay, it won't. So there's my... I'm going to let go. There's my first one. So it does give space around it. Okay. So... All right, that, that'll do. But there's a lot of flexibility here. You could set that and then rotate it. Okay, let's go a little bit wider. Right in there. Let's go to this point. Head off into here and like so. So we have two singles. Or we can rotate and we can get up to five if we had more logs. Uh, houses in that direction. Or if, as you start to get some really funky shaped things, you get some really interesting layouts of houses. It's It's a pretty smart game in the sense of of trying to figure out the best way to use land. I really like the flexibility there. I've learned just from other people's comments, if you were to um, want to put in a house that's going to concentrate on growing vegetables, if you can get into something like this and take it down to just one house, you, get, you can have two houses on the same property all as one plot, and then you can do something with the back end, in this case like a vegetable garden. Both families that live in both these houses will then tend whatever you've placed in the backyard. We've got lots of choices to go back behind places. But that isn't the design that I want for our main street. That would be a great design for further out. Right now I'm just jabbering away. And I'm going to pause because we are... Yeah, we're, we're not building anything right now. So I'm going to lay some of this out. I don't want it to be this, but I wanted to see what some housing would look like. So I want some one and a half plots. So we're actually let's go this direction first. So there, out like so. I want a little bit wider for the main strip that's got two houses in it and then something in the back. Though I don't need the back to be very big. You've got choices of chickens and goats and vegetables and there was another one, orchards for level one houses. Level two houses, you get into other things like 
artisans, they call them. So a tailor, a blacksmith, a, uh, a brewer. So businesses, basically. And that's really the concept of the Burgage plot that I was trying to bring to Austria but couldn't. It would be a business-oriented a lot or uh, you know a house along the main drive here the the main row the main boulevard so there'd be businesses through here instead of housing so in the sense that we think of it you know they would be houses they would live above their business and the property would be business focused and that's what i would like to see on this main strip here whereas further out would be chickens and, and vegetables and goats and that kind of thing. So let's pull this back again. Let's go a little bit shallower, like so. There we go. And then minus U. So that's the width. Can I go any wider or narrower and still accomplish that? So there, there, there. We can, but with a single house. What I found that with a double house, it completely fills in everything when you get to that that third tier and it really looks like a busy downtown I like that look so let's take you down to one we're gonna set you there I'm going to not gonna build it but I need to see what that's going to look like so you're there so I would want a storage probably right about here okay let's erase you and let's set the storage in I don't know how many logs I've got so well okay I've got 10 there it is right there but so I didn't want to commit it not knowing if I was then not gonna be able to build this so we'll commit to about there build this guy here and there's the beginning of whatever's behind all of these houses so that is the next one to get built now I can start committing logs to houses I think what else is there that absolutely has to get done? Food has to get done. There we go. So I want to get all of our services in place before I start placing houses. I want to make sure that food is on its way in. It's starting to feel like it's getting a little darker. It usually does that just before a storm comes in. Let's get a family in here. That's what I missed. Sitting here talking and not doing. This family, in fact, right now, let's just get two families in and let's pull one out of here. So I need two families to quickly get over here and get the bread baskets off the ground before the rain starts. And I need, actually, I need two families to start building this like crazy. Let's really push that one, get this built so we can get the rest of these supplies in. But it'll start to get dark and kind of give you a warning that a storm is going to be coming in soon. It'll just give you this little environmental clues of what's about to happen. As well, there is, if I can find it, a gameplay. There is a day-night cycle. Um, cosmetic day and night cycle. So I was reading um, out of that. Reading on Twitter from the developer to uh, about different thoughts as he was putting the game together. And he said that one feature he decided to add in for early access was day night it's not something that the game uses it uh, the game just runs you know continuously there is no effect of day and night but everybody wanted it so I went ahead and designed it in and it looks great if you're playing for yourself but you spend half of your time dark and it doesn't make for a great YouTube video so I'm not going to be using it though maybe one episode I'll turn it on so you can see it um, talking and forgetting what I'm doing we need food so let's grab food would be gathering where was gathering right now farming gather okay logs woodcutters lodge so that's firewood and saw pit and then we've got foresters hut for growing more trees over here we've got the hunters cap and we've got the forgers hut family requests more market space Ah, uh, the granary people want to set up a market. Okay, well, we'll get to that one soon. That'll be here in the middle somewhere. Um, hunting camp. So we want the food to be brought in to somewhere near the houses and near the markets. But we want the folks that are hunting the food to make short little trips to do their work. So I think this is a. it's better to have this out in here rather than make them walk from here like we're doing the granary out here. So let's head into here. You can see our contour lines. We drop downhill quite aggressively here. So 
If we were to get down here first person, you can see it. Really quite a hillside down into the uh, into the animals over here. I cannot scroll or move through any faster. There's our deer or elk or whatever those are. So how close do we want to be? And do we want it really at this angle or not? The tent. Yeah, I think I have a feeling something's going to be floating in the air. Let's take you uphill just a little bit. Something like this. Now what's that look like up here? Okay, so we're in here. So if we were to drop it into this area here, I think that would work. And over here we can do it without even taking any trees out. Let's go with that. And let's... Let's road these two together and come in opposite of this one. Oh, that looks good. Let's grab a road and come out from here. And... Go to here and curve. And then curve in. The roads do not take out trees. They just wind right on through. And let's see. Let's go all the way into you. So a little bit further and curve in like that. And it just goes right underneath the tree branches. Oops. Stay. There we go. And let's grab a forager's hut. The forager's hut will also allow you to grow herbs. So... There will be multiple uses for it. Where to? Let's get off to this side. Oh, we're still dropping down that hill. What will look good here? Let's spin you around. So off this end right here will be growing beds. Let's curve you or orient you with the hill. Like so. Um, trees uprooted to one zero. There we go. You're gonna go there, and let's road from there. I'm gonna curve you in, and a little bit more of a Y, more like that. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And we're gonna get those built. This guy is done. Where am I at? You are done. Let's grab a family into there, and how are we doing with the bread? Are we done? We are done. I can pull these families out of here, right? Although one wants to put up a camp or a, a market stall. There's an advantage to having that done. Just do we need it this early? Hmm. Let's leave one in there and go ahead and get that set up. So market stall, let's go for right about here, and... Most everyone makes the market stalls huge. And I found that that really doesn't work. Marketplace here. A great big central market just means that everybody living over here has to walk forever to go get food. And so they never do. And so it's never satisfied. And it's nothing will upgrade when they're not satisfied. And it just doesn't work out that well. You just don't want to go straight, do you? Okay, we'll start there. Oh, you're just funky. Okay, there's it's, it's having a hard time working around that well. Let's... Interesting. So I can't just make it a, an easy square. If I were to go in his... Yeah, you're just... You're all over the place. Okay, let's go there. And what happens if we do something like that? Can I go any further? Whoa, okay. Let's go out a little further and come back... What is the obstacle here? There is something here that it does not like. Um, grab a manor. No, grab a building. What have I got here? Grab the tavern. It doesn't show, see the white squares? It doesn't show anything in there. There's something underneath there that it is fighting. Okay, then let's put a market over here at this end. Yeah, let's go over here. Like so. If we were to take this whole end, there's six market locations. That's about as big as I would want to get. Really, three and four is even better. If I were to do that... Let's do three. Let's do that right there. And one thing to realize is you have to have four points. A lot of times people will build like in a triangle. And they, so they, they go you know, click, click, and click. And that's three points. And, and it stays orange. And they're trying to figure out why this won't work. It's because you haven't got to that fourth point yet. 
but this will do. There is a a single decoration in this game right here, this shrine, and I wonder if he will fit right in there. I like that. Let's rotate you around and spin the map. As you're coming into town, and you see that, I like it. Can I get any further? That's as close as it'll let me go. All right, there's a use for that, that little space that's left. And it naturally formed pathways. That's right, I noticed that when I was kind of moving around the map before. Right here. This area right here, it's like a little... Now, that's not a great example. Let's find... Where was I when I was seeing that? Right in here. It's like little animal trails that have formed. Or I guess pathways that people have made that are different from the king's roads these aren't officially the king's roads well that's still not the the one i was seeing before but it looked it was just kind of coming and going in the grass it really looked like little animal trails like you'd see out in the in the wilderness for real and it just amazed me how the, the the detail of this game but where are we now that i've been doing all this talking we've got oh if i can find the tent that's not it Animals are there, so we're right in here. We've got this guy being built. And let's kick these guys up to high so we get the food on its way in. Then we'll get to working on houses. You're working on this one already. Wait, pause. So I just sent you off the other way. Let's leave you here. Go back, go back. I didn't mean to... Okay, well, I, I messed up her, her life. All right, well, now she is one of the building families, so that whole family will be out building. We'll get... We'll be able to demonstrate that a little better when we get a house up and going. But we've got food now. We've got a place to store the food. We've got a place to store the goods, which they should be out here collecting right now. People. So this family. Well, at this point, it's just two in this family. Normally, there's three. Interesting. Jorg and Linhart. So they are working on these. I wonder as they get a house... That might be it. As they get a house, then the other family members show up. I think that I think there was a, something about that. Yeah. Okay, so they should be able to drag all that in just fine. They're dragging in firewood right at the moment. So firewood will be on its way in. Over here we've got 15 bread stored. So firewood is probably the last of the of the most important services to get established before we start building houses. And there is kind of a time limit on the houses. Construction, finish, forager's hut. Um, your approval system here. I was talking about that before. 50% and you get one family a month. 75% you get two families a month. The longer you stay homeless, the more that negative two is going to become a negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. And it takes months to take that off of your record it'll always remain in that previous i'm guessing it goes down one per month so next month it's going to say last month was a negative two and this month is a negative two and now you've got a negative four going on so don't want to go too long without getting your houses going but firewood is something i do want to get established then we'll start building houses um firewood would be where gathering you're right in there and what if i get the save I think I've got it set for 15 minute intervals. So that means I've been going for a half hour already? Whoa. I've been going for a long time already. I think this first episode is going to be a long one. It probably is, rather than split it all up. But, firewood. Your logging camp, you get to choose where you want them to take the trees. Your firewood, you can do that as well. We talked about turning this area into um, wheat fields. So let's have them take this area out. It doesn't mean they have to be placed here, but that is where they're going to work. And that's where they're going to work for now. Later they'll be working over here or something. So it's hard to figure out where best to place them because their, their target of work is going to change as, as things go on. This is a nice little small building to put into this to give you the sense of buildings. There is that. Um... That does usually keep them the furthest away from forests later because you naturally just kind of clear out as you build. So that's probably the worst place to put it, even though it looks good. What was that last comment that came down? I can't look at it while I'm in this mode. Okay. Um, April. Ah, so we're into April now. We're into storm season. So where do we want to gather firewood? 
Maybe we're up in here. Though, if I wanted to take that out, you guys are going to work on this side. Tell you what, we can move this later or just simply rebuild it later. So let's get it over here. Looks like their entrance is from this end. Yeah, there's the, the little dot. Let's tuck you up into here. We could make everything touch the road, make it convenient, but I kind of like the look of tucking things in. Can I do this without taking out a tree? Looks like that's it. Okay, you're going to go there. And we don't have to connect the roads. The trader is the only one I've ever gotten a message on that says, you're not connected to a king's road, so we're not going to work. Everything else, it, it speeds you up. I think they walk faster on a road. Actually, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they do. I don't. I can't actually say I've witnessed that. But if that's the case, then yeah, there's a little bit of a, an efficiency bonus if we do it. And it looks good. But you don't have to make everything connect the dots. It's not an absolute requirement. Um, so that is firewood. When that's built, we're going to tell it where to go. We've got... Where are our families allocated right now? Supplies, we still got some stone to haul away. And if I remember right, they do not use the cart for this. And it's really kind of frustrating. They walk out one at a time, they'll fill up a basket, put it on their back, and they walk back. So if you're building something that requires 20 stone, it's going to be a while. Planks are the same way. So boards that they cut from the logs, same way. You guys are working on a shrine, which has no materials. You'll be done pretty quick, so that's fine. But let's do kick this priority up a little bit. Where are you? That's the hitching post right there. Let's kick you up a bit. Did we get this guy built? We're over here. We did. So we need to get food coming in. We logging. We've got 17 timbers, 18 timbers. I think we're doing pretty good. And actually, well, we can only hold 28 until we, uh, the storage only goes so far. Let's pull you guys out for the moment. And we did get our market going, and we already have a firewood stall going in, which is from these guys. So the storehouse will set up a stall, which unfortunately I'm going to shut down because I'm not going to keep those employed. Granary, the same thing. So you've set up a stall over here, in which case you have nothing in it yet. So they built it, but they haven't stocked it yet. But I'm not going to maintain this one just yet unfortunately so minus well we'll wait for them to get the stone in we don't have enough families to to do everything and i need to get families into food so logs are going to be we're just going to deal with those 18 for the moment and we want that family instead to be bringing in some of our 40 animals so let's work on i gotta find you again there is a tent in here somewhere he hides pretty good at night or in the dark, you can see them. You know, nighttime or during a storm, it's pretty well lit up. But you guys, we want a family in here. And we can determine how to limit their hunting so they don't hunt us out of existence. So if we have 40 to choose from, let's leave like 15 as a reserve. And we've got a food storage of 36 and generic storage. In this case, it'll be hides of 12. So once they have filled that up, if you aren't manning your storehouse for the hides or your granary for the food then they will eventually fill up and just sit there and twiddle their thumbs and not work anymore so you gotta be aware of what they're doing or not doing foraging over here let's get a family into there we have one left unassigned kind of means builders or constructors but it also just in you know, in general means everything else so there is that we We've got everything in that's important. We just need five houses now. That's our limiting factor. Um, so we could, once we get planks, I've got two there, build the forager's hut. It'll take 25 coins, which would bankrupt us almost, so we're not going to do it yet. But it would build the, uh, the herb garden over here. And herbs are used to combat sickness. So that is our medieval medicine or herbs. So you do not need to be here anymore. Yeah, looks like it's all gone. You guys don't need to be here. Where'd you go? Right there. And minus. So don't need you. Don't need you yet. Eventually we will turn them on long enough to clear the foods out of here and the hides out of there. But that's all for the moment. Um, you guys, logging camp. We've got our 18 logs still, so we can leave that unmanned for a while. 
You guys are all building over here. Where are my three families? Oh, that's right. I did leave one in the granary. Okay. So the woodcutter's lodge, which means firewood. Kind of confusing. Logging camp means logs or timber, and woodcutters mean firewood. Let's put somebody in there and get the firewood production started. And they will set up their own market stall. Hopefully they will take over the one that just got abandoned when I shut down the... Uh, does it say abandoned? There we go. When I shut down the stall that these guys have tried to put up. So the families that run these, let's grab a single family here. So this family is running the granary. And they will also be maintaining, say, a garden in their own home. And they will be uh, maybe running a market stall. So different family members will be doing different things, but all associated either with, either with the family or with the job you've assigned them to. So it's a real interesting way of doing this. Now, I'm going to pause here for a moment and think. I want artisans through here. And so I don't want to put the houses in here that will be where we put gardens and chickens and things but we kind of need those right now we don't need these guys right now so as much as i would love to flush out this main strip through here this main boulevard that's really not a priority at the moment so road curves off somewhere we're going to be building in toward this area we are um industry is where out toward here, that makes sense. Except for this, but that's temporary. Once those 120 are gone, we'll delete the the uh, the stone camp, and, and uh, that'll just be over with. So industry is mostly focused out over here. Town is over here. Services kind of in here. Okay, where do the first houses go? I want to set up a big house to begin with for vegetables. And that'll be the only one I'm going to allocate funds to until I get the trader up and going as far as setting up something in their backyard. A um, little complicated to run another road out of here. Let's come off this direction. Like so. Into here. Like so. Yeah, something like that. Don't know where it's going to go to. We'll figure that out later. And I want to take all these trees down before we build housing into this. Though some of the houses will maintain the trees in the backyards, which is kind of nice. Until you set up an industry back there, then it'll strip them all out. But let's play with that as a place. What's our water look like here? Underground water. We do have water here. Let's do that one right now. So we'll set up another well. Let's see. Residential well. Let's set up a well in here. Uh, spin you around like, yeah, like so. And where to? Near this tree. We'll see if we can keep that tree. Eh, we'll see how long that lasts. Um, manners, or H for house. That works out. Not manners. I'm still calling them manners in my mind. The manor is the big house. But, um, vegetables... Let's play with that. This very first one. How best to do that? Hmm. Let's grab another road. So I want them oriented a different direction. Let's fire a road right through here. Um. Sure. Let's let's do that and let's connect the dots. Uh. We're gonna be a little crooked there, but that'll be fine. They were a little crooked back then. Let's come off of here. And H for house. This will be our front. The whole thing? Huh. Let's see what that looks like. I want to go back. I think I have to go back at least this far to do what I want to do. This may be way excessive. Yeah, let's go. Well, let's go halfway. A little more than halfway, but like so. All right, let's see what that looks like. You're in the right orientation. I want to take you down to one. I want a little more room back here for a vegetable garden. I want to, these two houses to make it worth pulling vegetables out of here. So let's pull all the way into here and go across. And we'll take the curve up like that. I guess we'll go ahead and take this whole corner for this one plot. Uh, minus, minus, minus. Huge vegetable garden here for these two families to take care of. Let's do that. 
build you. Turn the game back on. And are we building anything else right now? If I got them, we got the well I just put in. You're up and running. So I don't think there's anything else going on right now. We have food, we have food, we have firewood, we have a granary. So only one family left to build with. Let's pull you out of the granary. I really want the building to happen. We have 18, 15 logs to spend. Ah, there's something else to show you. You can choose between showing you what is still available, your surplus, or everything you actually have total, and not know how much of that is already committed to something else. I prefer this view to know that we still have 15 logs left, rather than 18 logs in total. So 15 logs, three of them go over here. Now, with that huge plot set, and that's going to be kind of an exception. It's really a great big plot. Let's build some more more realistic looking ones. A shrine, that's what they were working on. So let's kick this up so we make sure it gets done. You are definitely next. Houses, what happens? Well, let's... Do I want housing in here or is this more of a... Yeah, more of a public services and businesses sort of a thing. Whereas the houses are deeper in. Let's try it here. If I were to go there, 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 and there, what do we get? I rotate you around. I guess I would maintain this because this is the entrance over here. So that makes sense. Or does it? Storage is over here. We'll probably have other houses over here. Let's, let's face them into each other. All right, so that gives us four houses with four somethings in the backyard. That'll make more sense when the first one gets built. Except for the... Uh, what I don't know is if the chickens or the goats improve the production if there's more space. It makes sense that they would. Let's turn you this way. A little more room back there. and Let's take you down. Let's do that. A little more space. Potentially two families to manage each. Because when they're managing the, the, uh, the vegetables, they're not doing their job over here. They're at home harvesting or, or planting. Whoa, that swung in quick. So two families doing the same one allows more people to be out there working in the town. I like that better. Let's go with that. So you are going to be... There's three out of our five. Two more. Let's set you from here. Like so... Nope, you didn't grab right. Right there, there we go. So back into here, over. Let's actually start, yeah. You almost have to place your roads in first. But what do our roads do here? That curves off like that. Let's start curving out and around into this area. Now, let's see here. Again, planning for the future so we don't mess anything up now. These are where our fields need to be. And it's only emmer. Flax really has no benefit here at all. So it's just a matter of making lots of bread. We could do that. So let's set a road. i got to memorize that curve because it's going to go away as soon as I click here. But coming off of here, it goes all the way into there. Well, let's just kind of follow what I kind of remember. Click. Let's see that again. And emmer. Yeah, pretty close. Take you into... Hmm. The King's Road cannot be deleted, and he kind of messes with us here. Let's just drift you into there. So let's come off of here and continue the curve into there and there. Make that our road and delete you. So road, alt, click remove. Okay, we'll take that one coming off the King's Road. That'll be our natural road through there. Okay, so that's that one. So let's get something that kind of flows with it, kind of parallels with it. And then we'll we'll know a little more about where to start placing houses. You're going to kind of curve out and around and disappear back here somewhere. Don't know what you go to yet. But with that, we could Emmer. So this is all kind of available. We've got our farm building to go in. We've got our windmill to go in. Don't have to be next to the fields, though. Hmm. Housing. Where am I? That's it. That's it. Burgage plots. 
One, you've got a nice curve. The game does a good job of following the road and curving with you. So the way it follows up in there, I could even take that into here and watch how it kind of works its way through and figures things out, subtract a little bit, rotate this around. Yeah, there's some, some funky uh, plots there. Let's add a few more. It won't let me. Okay. Uh, curve into here. Itty bitty little thing right there. And that's... I guess it's saying this is all field back here. Interesting. So, not something we're going to be doing, but just kind of following that. We are into here. Let's grab from here. Do we, wait, do we want to get across this? We probably do. Yeah, let's do something like that. It's a challenge to try to make it look like it it's some semi-natural. How would it have formed eventually, not knowing what building is going to go there to form it? So we'll just form the buildings to what kind of feels like natural pathing. So try that again. Let's see what happens if we were to go from here to there and around. Logs up there is 11. So you're going to go here. Now as we move around, it's interesting. I have to have four points. One, two. I could have clicked in here and carried it around. It will follow. Once you get your next point, it will follow the curves on its own for a while. So we could go there and then click in. And see how everything just kind of... You get lots of different choices if you take your time. Let's click up here and work around. Now we got choices like this. As I curve around, we start to kick them in at angles. We do that and then rotate. And then take away one. End up with a real interesting one. Looks like another possible um, garden plot. Big garden area for these two houses to take care of. I like that. And the two traditional ones that could be goats and chickens. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's do that one and let's change the priority. Let's get that one built. So this one's first, very high. These guys are going to be high. Um, I see there's a highest. There we go. Okay. So you, over here, you're going to be high and high and high. I'm going to work on you three next. And then, oh, I suppose you. Let's, let's go for you as very high. And you're just a high. Okay. There's our five plots. They're probably not going to get built this episode unless I speed everything up. Is there anything else to talk about while they're working? I could kick that speed up to up one notch, which isn't a two. That's right. So in this game, fast and slow is Z and X. So that takes a while to get used to. One, two, three, four has to do with, with assigning groups. And I assume that means you're military. So I haven't dealt with with using those buttons before but we could just sit here and kind of watch in fact let's pop into this mode and just kind of watch how this works who's working over here oh you're they pound on the ground to make the boards appear up above <laughs> it's kind of funky but it is kind of interesting the boards will appear on the ground and then they will be lifted up and put in place it's an interesting way of doing it let's walk over here so this is a house, yet we're building some kind of a raised area out front with a foundation underneath it. It's interesting. The door comes in. So what would be in that raised area? The sleeping? Sleeping or storage? Get it up a little bit higher off the ground, maybe. That might be sleeping in there. Might be. Little tiny windows, because there wasn't glass at this point, so you don't want the wind blowing through too much. Just enough to look out and pull back a bow and arrow and let it fly to whatever enemies are coming in at you. Oh, the door closed. So they're almost done here. There's the outhouse. Very important. Yep, there it is. Now, if they were wiser, they would put the door on the inside rather than on the outside, so you don't have to put, uh, put shoes on. You know, that's... You want to know if you're a redneck. If uh, going to the bathroom at night involves slippers and a flashlight, you just might be a redneck. <laughs> That's a joke I heard a long time ago. All right, so there's our first house. We've got 
people got a family that has moved into it. Any messages lately? Construction's finished. Okay, we're in April. Um, got a negative six. We're going into our second month without housing, so that's going to be that's going to take a little while to overcome, but we will. And so somebody is waiting. What does that mean? I see right here. So somebody just showed up. Two people came, and the third person just arrived, Beatrix. And she is resting at home. They will rest at home for the first few days before they venture out into society. These two have been here for a while. They are firewood cutters. So firewood cutting, one is transporting. So he's bringing firewood to here. No, nope, bring firewood to, a, to their stall. Okay, so you're transporting to a stall. And the other one is, well, he was cutting firewood. I think he's also now transporting, peddling. Okay, so this one has taken over the stall and is now peddling firewood. This one is, can I go over there? Click, yeah. So you, cool, just got done chopping up some firewood and stored it away. And storage over here, 21 out of 50. Cutting down another tree. So did we set your area? We did not. You guys, uh, advanced, will work in this area here. And we'll clear this out for the whole area clear this out for farming right there so those that is your area and how are we doing as far as these guys they're taking out this area they're working their way through what we set to uh and they're just starting at the closest ones to them and working their way through so it'll be a while before we need to move their target area so we've got our first house we could tell them to expand the living space, which means they're going to build another house right over here where this little lean-to is. And actually, I think that's pretty important. It's going to take two more logs. Now, we are running out of logs because we took a family out to start building. I don't see us building a lot more until these five are done. So let's go ahead and, and spend two more of those five timbers. So, yes, add a living space. But before I do, because it'll take us all away, we can choose what to do with the backyard. We can put vegetables in there for 15 gold. We can put chickens in there for 25. They'll make eggs passively. Whereas these will grow and require plowing and harvesting labor. So the yields will depend on the plot size. Ah, there's the answer. The chickens don't seem to depend on the plot size. They'll just passively send eggs into the system. Okay, same thing here. Yep, passive yield of hides from goats. And when you <clears throat> take this development point, you then are capable of putting orchards in which will give you, let's pop into here again, orchards. So produce apples, apple harvest depends, oh, happens around September of every year. And it'll take three years to get to full yield, but there will be a partial yield prior to that. Otherwise, when you get to tier two, when we take this house and advance it to the next level, once we have satisfied a church and clothing, which we'll do with a tannery, uh, get all this satisfied, then we can drop into tier two and allow us to turn a tier two house into a bakery, into a tailor, into an armorer's workshop, a fletcher's workshop, a cobbler's workshop, a blacksmith's workshop, a brewery, or a joiner's workshop. So all kinds of things we can make here when we get to tier two. Tier three, I've not had the chance to play with yet. I know that it doubles the housing so that if there's two families here for tier two there'll be four families available for tier four tier three which if you've got a plot building shields out of your planks and suddenly you have four families working and they're all four going to be building shields out of your planks you better have a lot of planks because they're going to eat you out of planks so i don't want to put double lots like this one with two houses for some of these artisans so there'll be singles in here I don't know. The brewery could use some help. But a lot of these other ones will just empty your town of supplies real quick. So there is a little bit of forethought into how we want to lay these out as to the future of each property and what they're going to do. And with a game like this, with multiple provinces that 
as your influence goes up to a thousand, you'll be able to claim another province. You get to do it all over again. You're starting with over there with a set of tents and five families and 50 coins and a pile of stones and a pile of bread and some logs and you do it all over again over here. Though this one would be focused more on farming. So you would take different points. You would concentrate on the heavy plow. That sort of thing. Whereas us, we're going to concentrate on trading and on uh, probably something to do with mining over here because we've got the we've got this guy over here, the rich deposit of iron, and we're we need the funds, so we're going to need to trade as cheaply as we can and as effectively as we can. We'll eventually be able to barter between them, so we could trade their food in in exchange for our oh armor or something that we've made with our iron to equip them and they can be feeding us and whatever other if we do get a third province i don't know if i will i think we'll concentrate on the two but you can see how complex this game will get soon and running it on speed three too much time is going to go by before you're able to uh, to address all the issues before you suddenly got you know enemies banging on your door rattling their sabers at us so another there it is, another one just finished going in. They're all a little different. Look at the little lean-to in the end of this one. Does this have that? This? Oh, this did too. Okay, so they're not different. I thought the houses looked quite different. I think they do. Just these two happen to be the same design. You, I want that other house over here. Let's do that. I need to shut this episode down, but let's let's see here what do i need to do i didn't do it because i was showing you all of this okay so now i can do it expand the living space and let's kick this up highest highest so let's kick this up so we get this guy built and then we will turn on the garden now i didn't when i was playing this for myself i noticed that there wasn't a time of year when they actually harvested they were harvesting in the spring. They were harvesting in the snow. So it's almost like it just sets a timer from when you plant. Then so many months later, they're going to harvest no matter what time of the year it is. So I think there's a little more work to be done in that part of the game. But that's what I've noticed so far. We're going to get this guy built. We're going to garden in. We'll get the rest of these built. Get everybody into homes. We'll start reversing course on this. And we just turn into May. This is quite interesting. You've got a recent 30 days chart and a previous chart. And at the beginning of each month, you erase half of it. What was the recent 30 days becomes the previous or something along those lines. So this is this bounces up and down all the time. So it's going to be hard to, to really follow it, know what's, what's coming. You get to 80% and suddenly it goes to the next month and you're back to 59 again building up once more time but you gain a lot when you've got ample food available and food variety and clothing variety and everyone's got firewood and everyone's happy and and there are quite a few other factors involved your church is available and and your taverns available so there'll be lots of different ways to change the town approval We're already starting to build yeah I'm going to build that homelessness again. But it will eventually go away, as I need to. I definitely need to wrap this episode up. We're in May. We're raining. We're building houses. Next time we'll get these built, and we'll continue the expansion. We'll get the tannery in, get the food, thing, the food uh, clothing taken care of, get the church in somewhere, get the manor started, which will allow us to tax and tithe to the church, which will, which will give us a steady stream of influence in the region. So there's so much yet to do. I'm going to call this one done here. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye now.